This video is about three things in Daly City. Coastal erosion, axe throwing, and raw fish. The rugged Daly City coast remained fairly inaccessible and sparsely populated through the turn of the 20th century. That isolation changed in 1905 with the construction of a railroad intending to hug the coast from San Francisco to Santa Cruz. When the horrific 1906 San Francisco earthquake struck, a landslide occurred that you can see here, collapsing over 4,000 feet of railroad track along with rolling stock. In 1920, the railroad gave up trying to maintain the track on the eroding cliffs. Undeterred, the highway department in 1930 acquired the land and built a highway. You can see they weren't successful in fighting Mother Nature either and the highway had to be relocated. Constant pounding of the surf along the coast undercuts the cliffs. Rain scours and penetrates the soil, loosening the rock structure. Gravity pulls the weakened slope down in slumps and slides. If that weren't enough, the mighty San Andreas earthquake fault runs one quarter mile from this spot. Ground shaking from earthquakes causes landslides too. The ground is not as solid as it seems. A 2017 University of California study identified Daly City as one of the riskiest sites for collapsing cliffs in California. Most of Daly City housing was built in the 1950s. Moderate sized housing at moderate prices and hey, who wouldn't want a $15,000 house with an ocean view? Unfortunately, 11 of the homes immediately started to slide so the developer bought them back and moved them further inland. There used to be an 80-foot cul-de-sac here. Now it rests about 100 feet downhill. Five houses on this cul-de-sac were demolished or moved away. After the Pacific Coast Highway here was abandoned in 1955, the state took over the area and made a 55-acre park. The park was closed in 2009 due to damage and continued danger from landslides. Thornton State Beach recently reopened with Daly City operating it rather than the state. The growing sport of axe throwing is increasing beyond woodsmen and timber workers. One hand or two, two hands is up and over the top of the head, one hand is up and over the shoulder, both releasing at arm's length, roughly eye level, because that's where the target is. When our turn is over, we're putting the axes back into the holster before stepping off of the line. Reason being is that we do not need to walk around the facility like an axe merchant trying to pawn our goods off on the next person. And we definitely don't have to go to the bathroom with an axe today. I'm surprised. <laughs> have people actually taken the axes to the bathroom? Yes. There was only <laughs> two rules before, and now there's four <laughs> rules. Um, so. At the ceremony mall. Now the mall may not be something you associate with good food. It's got a great sushi place. Let's go check it out. The first thing you have to do is bypass the food court as you come in. It's got some, you know, tasty places to eat, but this is not where we're going. We're going to Izumi Sushi. It's just so convenient. You watch the sushi go by and you say, okay, what do I want today?
Want something that's not on the rotating conveyor? No problem. Each table has a display menu where you can electronically order udon, tempura, baked fish, tamaki, or specialty rolls. They do have mochi and cheesecake. Specialty orders are delivered by the bullet train to your table. The bullet train is faster than Uber Eats or DoorDash, but those services make home deliveries from this restaurant. Looks like our train has arrived. This is really good. It has the cream cheese, tuna, spicy red pepper flakes, green onion. It really packs a punch, but it's good. The orange plates are the most expensive, they're $6.50, the yellow are $4.50, and the purple are $5.50.